I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Your B. Episode one: Payback's a Bolt. This isn't. Hello, Parker. This isn't particularly an episodic game. I'm not entirely sure what the episode one is all about. I mean, I guess there's gonna That's be. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, hi, Parker. You're interrupting, aren't you? Archive recording seven three nine six three dash two. It's cutscene time, Parker. In the beginning, the AI created the Yorbi, a robot class designed to protect all sentient life throughout the universe. A golden age of peace and prosperity followed. However, this new period would not last. The great decommissioning of the second cycle was enacted by the Yorbis to remove robots considered to be corrupt or obsolete. All but one was accounted for. The escapee, a Model 700 robot known as Dr. Zox, escaped into the shadows of the universe without warning on the 17th cycle of the third sun. An unknown computer virus was uploaded to the Yorb core, disabling all of the Yorbi collective. Dr. Zox, who turned out to be an evil genius, took over the entire collective and installed his minions throughout the known systems. To showcase his power, he banished the remnants of the Yorbis to a desolate asteroid as a warning to those who dared to oppose the new order. All hope is lost. End of archive recording. Rather dramatic way to end an archive recording, don't you think? Dun dun dun. New entry. As the last active Yorbi, it is up to you to stop Dr. Zox and retake the universe. Good luck. That's convenient. So yeah, we're Yorbi, which is a robot. Oh yeah, this game's made by it's Happy Dance to Games. Stop Dr. Zox and restore the galactic order. I was talking, lady. Um, a review copy of this game was provided to me by Happy Dance Games. You're going to have to jump. I know. So yeah, I've already played this a bit, so I have some weapons and stuff. Um, whoop. That is one thing about this game. It's pretty easy to fall off. There's this slight platform relevance. Break those crates and see what's inside. You'll notice pretty quickly... Parker. Get down. You'll notice pretty quickly my cat getting in the way. Um, nice. The game is very much like Ratchet & Clank All for One. You've even got these crates to break for gears, which... And I plug that in. Bear significant oh, similarity to bolts. You can buy weapons and upgrades for our weapons. Looking good. Interesting that the weapon upgrades, like, you have three weapon upgrade slots, and you get to pick which upgrades you put in your each slot. Yorby, use these shields for cover against enemy fire. You got me there. <laughs> Yorbi has quips. If you don't like the quips, the other characters are all no, completely silent. The shield is down. Which is kind of weird. They seem they're just reskinned enemies Perfect. basically, the other characters. They actually have a better punching animation than Yorbi and actually break boxes a lot better. I actually don't really like playing as Yorbi, but he's obviously the default character, so I figured I'd show him off. He's got a really poor punching animation honestly. I mean, the other ones have much better ones, and they also break boxes better. It's kind of weird. I guess it's because their hitboxes are way bigger. The audio mix is a bit weird too. Like, you might have noticed the the sound was all coming out of the right channel there. Sometimes Yorbi's voice does that, and it doesn't seem to really bear much correlation to Yorbi's position on the screen. So this is one of the better weapons, probably the best weapon really. One weird thing, the boxes yeah, can't be destroyed by bullets, you gotta punch them. Shooting them actually basically wastes the money that was inside them, because they usually fly away. The physics aren't bad, the visuals are pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. There's a variety of different weapons, I actually managed to get all of them already. So we've got... Plasma Pistol has this auto-recharge cooldown thing, much like the Halo Plasma Pistol. Um, Minster Jr. has bullets, it's just a standard Yorbi, minigun. We need to get on that transporter pad. 
Deactivate the force fields by using the switches. Yeah, this game is fairly clearly designed for up to four player co-op, as you can see those four teleporter pads things. Uh, the plasma ball is probably my favorite weapon here. It's like single shot kills, and initially it overheats after every shot, but you can upgrade it to not overheat as much. And because it does so much crazy damage already and overheating sucks so much, you pretty much want to only fill up the upgrades with overheat, anti overheaty whatever stats. See, that's what I'm talking about about Yorbi's voice being weird, like, just was in the right channel for no apparent reason over there. Uh, Looking good. The game definitely lacks some polish, like, I'm not, the picking up gears is a little slow, and, like, compare it to a ratchet, standard, Perfect. break crates, lots of bolts fly out, then they get sucked in by, you know, your main character, Vortex of Gravity. And it makes collecting things really easy and gives some nice animation to it. It feels pretty stiff in this. Get on that transporter. So here's your four player transporter like most co-op games give you. I haven't played this in co-op yet. Um, like most games, it's better in co-op, I'm sure. Use the switch to activate. If you haven't played all for one, uh, Ratchet and Clank all for one, it gets a lot of hate, but it is a pretty good game if you approach it as, like, you know, you have to realize it does a spin-off, not a main Ratchet game, and it's pretty much required, in my opinion, that you play it in co-op. Uh, I really love the quips with, like, if you got Quark and Dr. Nefarious on the same team, just really good quips. Ratchet 2, to a uh, lesser extent Clank. But the quotes, honestly, are worth the asking price to me alone. But the, the gameplay is pretty funny in that. It's just, Yogi, it's not a normal Ratchet game. This is the first game. you have encountered. We need to reset these to reboot the core. Use the console to drop the force build. See, so this is our standard busy work. The gameplay is pretty much just shoot stuff. You know, standard twin stick stuff. Oh, I forgot to mention, when you aim with the right stick, it actually does this lock-on sort of thing, so you're not aiming directly. Oops. You die pretty quick. So yeah, you have a lock-on, which is actually pretty interesting, because that lets you focus on dodging. It doesn't really make a huge amount of difference, but it's an interesting idea. What are you doing? I'm honestly not a huge fan of Yorbi's back sass. Yeah, I needed that. I don't feel it's as well executed as assorted other co-op quip games. Like, I'm gonna try not to compare this constantly to All for One, but All for One had great Get quips. On that elevator. Yeah, yeah. And you spend a kind of awkward amount of time running around just to break these boxes, and it just. It doesn't feel all that satisfying, just going around to click up, collect this stuff. It's just the, it just doesn't feel like a polished, you know, idea. Like, it's pretty quick to collect bolts in Ratchet collect Clank, it doesn't feel like busy work. Cogs. You've got an epic wrench. It's fairly epic for a wrench, I would say. Not sure what you use a wrench like that for. Uh, let's show off some of the uh, other weapons. The EMP blaster is clearly meant for co-op. Basically useless in solo. It stuns enemies in like an area of effect and is actually pretty cool, but you have to switch weapons to actually kill things, or you have to melee them, which is unfortunate. The shotgun is basically a high rate of fire version of the plasma thing, except it's really short range. It also doesn't spread out like, you know, it doesn't fire a shot, it's more like a slug. It also runs out of ammo insanely yeah, fast. I don't really get the point of the pipe bomb, it's really awkward to use, honestly. It has an area of effect, but it... I don't even know how to trigger it if you can, or it just takes for a long time. See, there we finally go. The MVPs are definitely the Plasma Ball and the Little Mincer, or whatever it's called. The Plasma Ball is just very satisfying to use. So we've got some more robots. We've got some very minor platforming bits here. Oh, these things. 
So you get wrench, or not wrenches, um, gears that are basically your money, and these capsule things also let you upgrade or purchase new weapons. I've got all of the weapons, but I'll show you. This device can be used to purchase additional weapons. Very conveniently, the weapon shop, which is where the upgrades go. This guy's just sitting here. That these guys are one of the other player models. Let's get our money. You can toggle through your different currencies here with the D-pad for some reason. The controls are pretty simple. So. Yeah, so the plasma ball, I really like this heat grade, the heat sink upgrade for it. Oh no, I can't show you the upgrades. So you got rate of fire, firepower, and either heat sink or ammo capacity, depending on which thing. And heat sink is pretty good because the overheating nature of the weapons is pretty annoying. But once you upgrade your heat sink, they recharge Come really on. quickly. Oop. Did I just kill myself? I think I just killed myself. The final magwalk must be around here somewhere. You've got three lives. I deactivate the force field by using the console. I'm trying to talk to you, lady. Uh, you've got three lives. Dying a third time doesn't really mean too much. I think it prevents you from getting a trophy for certain things, but not really a super That's punishing game. There has to be a way across. Try looking for an activation switch for that bridge. And honestly, you might have noticed there's really not a huge variety of enemies. There are more enemy you types. Must activate all of the switches to open it. There are more enemy types we should see later on. Maybe yeah, some are missing from that. this level since the first level, of course. There's like these suicide drone things that I'm not really a big fan of because they limit. Okay, that definitely can hurt you. That's good to know. That was a real death there, though it, as yeah, you can see, yeah. it didn't really matter that much. I don't even think I lose any money or anything. Just matters for your Maglock achievement, detected. I guess. So, we always need to open these maglocks. It's like the law in co-op games that you have to have these things that everybody has to go up to and press a button on. Like, Resident Evil 5 just really love those things where Chris and Sheva had to go and press a button. Parker? I am playing video games. Excuse me. Would you get down from in front of the screen? Thank you. I didn't really... Oops. This is one of those kind of annoying platformy things I might have mentioned. It's pretty easy to fall off because Yorby's jump is really sh short. I don't know how you've managed to survive, Yorby. I will destroy you! That is, of course, our generic <laughs> villain. Yorby. So yeah, we've got our turret section boss fight. Not a big fan of turret sections. Somebody must like turret sections, right? Because they keep putting them in games, but... Yeah, the first two bosses were this. i kind of hoping it's not every boss that's like that. can't really tell quite yet. But, uh, generally, it's not so much a bad game, is that it's pretty unpolished in some ways, and more importantly, it's fairly lacking in content. Like, the encounters with the enemies feel pretty samey. The boss design here doesn't do too much for me. The actual no! character design and stuff seems great. Get you, it seems very Ratchet and Clank inspired. Like, if you told me these guys were mooks in a Ratchet and Clank game, I would believe you. Like here, these the that's our main villain guy here on the right, and looks pretty good. Just the there's not too many variety of enemies, and like those main mooks, the guy on the left there, that's our generic enemy soldier. They really only come with two weapons, the mincer, you know, the machine gun thing, and the plasma pistol. And so encounters with them is pretty samey, and, you know, you just run around, you dodge, and you shoot them. Level design isn't terrible, but it just... There isn't really too much variety and polish to really make it feel... I don't know. 
cohesive. It just feels a little. Yorby, you're doing great. Continue pushing on. You fool! There's nothing you can do to stop me. Oh, I have lots of money. I should spend it on things. Let's see. I really don't get these pipe bombs. They really don't seem to work right. Kind of curious of what happens if we get. All oh, right, I can't really do too much with that. Let's boost its firepower then. I like the idea of the EMP thing. It's clearly a co-op only sort of thing though. Also, it's really weird the when they're stuck in the EMP, they won't fall down until the EMP effect goes away, even if they die. So to your right. So since the name is Yorbi Episode 1, I am assuming that a sequel's planned. I can definitely see major areas for improvement. I I do really like the plasma bolt. See this pipe bomb, I really don't get. I don't get it. Looking good. But the plasma ball, very fun to use. These guys just don't even care, do they? Come on, pay attention. I noticed the AI doesn't really have very long range. It just kind of stops caring after a point. So this is kind of what I'm talking about, about samey encounters. We'll get a lot of rooms where just crap spawns around you. And you just kind of have to run back and forth. The actual controls in combat aren't bad. It's just the encounters are quite samey and things just feel like they could use more variety and polish all over. I mean, these things are health and ammo boxes. I'm not sure if all of them are both or... Oh, I think that was... That's definitely health. I guess the other one was ammo. Detected. Also, this thing apparently breaks boxes. It's kind of weird that all guns don't break boxes. You can die really fast. And death doesn't really feel like it matters too much. Great work. Now find the remaining magnet. I was kind of surprised. This. I didn't really see much press at all for this. And. Like, even from the dev, there wasn't really too much posting about it. It's on PS4, I'm not sure. Or if it's on anything else, I'll. As always, the platforms and where you can buy it and stuff will be on the in the description. Kind of an unfortunate week to be launching a PS. Well, any game, but especially a PS4 Let's game. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to be on Bloodborne's week. <laughs> Next week is not a super great week either. Oh man, I hope I'm not getting sick. Something's going around at work. I hate when that happens. Do you, if you have any capacity to take a sick day when you're sick, take the sick day. That's that's what they're for. Please, just don't get us sick. Why can't I get you? Oh, that was weird. I don't, I don't know why I couldn't get that. Looking good. So yeah, overall, I see potential here. It's just. Like, especially the art direction and the, the controls and mechanics feel fine. It just needs more to it and it needs more polish behind it. Especially since, if you don't know, the PlayStation 4 has a pretty good selection of twin stick shooters. Like, it's pretty hard to go up against. You got Super Stardust, you got Dead Nation, you got Assault Android Cactus upcoming. You've got Geometry Wars 3, of course. And you've got Resogun. People call it a twin stick shooter. I mean, I, I don't really consider it that. Yes, you use the right stick to shoot, but it's two directions. It's more of a defender clone. Oh, I, like it, I don't mean that derisively. I love Resogun. But calling it a twin stick shooter is a bit weird for me. Perfect. Yeah, 
Oh, and the weapons. I unlocked all of the weapons in it, baby. like 10, 20 minutes. There's only these six, I think. And we're already full in upgrades on some of these. Like, you can sell your upgrades. Oh, I guess you have to sell all of them. All right. Now we get a trophy for it, of course. Let's see. Hmm. I'm really not sure how a fire rate affects these, re these cooldown weapons. Let's try all fire rate on this. Oh, we can't. They need those, like, capsule things, these things in the top right, to do some of the upgrades. Okay, it's pretty much what you expect, just fire rate, not the cooldown. Which is unfortunate, because it's mostly the cooldown that matters with anything, well, for most of the weapons anyway. I guess it'd be nice with the machine gun. So yeah, overall, decent premise, just... I don't know, it just feels like a lot of the same, and... The sameness isn't super polished to begin with. So... I'd be interested to see how Yorbi 2 pulls out, but... I'm just not quite feeling this. Like, the animation isn't terrible here. And like, the art design... Especially for the characters, it's pretty good, but why doesn't the rest of the game live up to that? Like, the sound effects here. I'm gonna need at least more than one sound effect for each gun, because it sounds pretty samey here. One more maglock detected in the immediate area. Alright, well that's pretty much what there is to show here. This has been Yorbi. It's on PlayStation 4. Not sure if other platforms. They'll be in the description, like I said. I initially thought you could remap the controls, but no, it's just the control list here. Parker, that is my keyboard. What are you doing? Parker's sniffing my keyboard like a weirdo. I thought you should know that. You're my friends. <laughs>